Hello and welcome to Multibody Dynamics B for 2122. My name is Jason Moore. I'll be the primary instructor. Uh, and this is the first video for the course. I'm going to go over a little bit of introductory material, tell you uh, a little bit about what multibody dynamics might be, and a bit about how the course is going to play out. So, I'm not the only instructor. Uh, we have two junior lecturers, Roseanne and Domas, and also two teaching assistants, Sophia and Akshat. And you'll get to interact with all of them uh, during the work sessions, and uh, as well as in Q&A times. And we'll uh, introduce them uh, at the first work session on Tuesday. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm new to TU Delft as of 2020. I was an assistant professor of teaching at the University of California, Davis, before that. Um, uh, but I have moved here to TU Delft to uh, take over the TU Delft Bicycle Lab, which is the primary uh, research endeavor that I work on. Uh, and I'll also be teaching multibody dynamics and sports engineering in the coming years. Very happy to be here. Uh, I'm an American uh, as, uh, um, for the, and lived there for the last 39 years of my life, so uh, I'm enjoying uh, getting to know Dutch society and uh, meeting you all and, and uh, how things are, uh, are different and the same and, uh, and um, looking forward to working with you all. So what is multibody dynamics? Um, the Wikipedia definition is essentially the study of the dynamic behavior of interconnected rigid or flexible bodies each of which may undergo a large transfer, translational and rotational displacements. So we're interested in how things move, especially when we have uh, multiple bodies that are connected together. And in this class, we're only going to focus on rigid bodies, uh, but these ideas uh, are extendable to flexible bodies. Um, and uh, if you research and stay in this field more, you'll uh, explore the wide range of uh, different types of uh, um, multi-body dynamic systems that, that uh, you would, we encounter. So what have I used multi-body dynamics for? Well, I um, first of all, I model bicycles and single track vehicles. So I uh, started off sort of as a vehicle dynamicist, but then uh, also started working in biomechanics of the human uh, and how they ride and balance on a bicycle. So all those pieces together are a lot of moving parts and we can model them as a multi-body system. I did my postdoc in uh, lower limb walking and, and running. Um, I've uh, done rowing biomechanics, standing and balancing, um, uh, worked on motorcycles too, and um, looked at inertial measurement things, um, other aspects of bicycling, and I've been doing uh, ski research lately too. Um, at the Bicycle Lab, we focus mostly on bicycles, but I also work on a lot of other sports. So uh, at this point, I'm a sports and vehicle uh, dynamicist of some sort. I'd like to show this figure uh, to sort of see where this multi-body uh, modeling and, and systems fit into what we are uh, interested in in the real world as engineers. So. Up in the left, I have uh, a couple of real bicyclists. Um, I spend a lot of time thinking about how uh, bicyclists behave, uh, both from a safety perspective or from a um, uh, performance and sports uh, perspective. And we're interested in the motion of uh, people on bicycles. Well, how do we start to analyze it and think of that? If I move to the right there, I have this uh, abstraction arrow. And I get to this box where we make some abstraction about reality. And these are models, okay? You've already probably seen, you should have seen, free body diagrams where we can break down and think about how, what forces might be acting on, on a body. Um, with these free body diagrams, we can then uh, use that to make mathematical models using some of the um, uh, uh, theories and laws of, of the natural world that prior engineers and scientists have come up from it with uh, for us. We take those models and um, sometimes they're interesting in of themselves just uh, examining the mathematics uh, like we see on pencil and paper 
but they become particularly useful when we turn them into com computational models. So we translate those mathemat mathematical models into some kind of computer program that lets us exercise and utilize these models to produce uh, simulations um, and uh, different other ways to examine the features and characteristics of that model. So taking these models, uh, doing that, uh, we do that analyze, uh, analyzation and simulation step and then we can get um, different kind of predictions of the real world. But we want to make sure that our predictions are in fact correct so we come back to the real world situation we can take measurements uh, with different types of sensors uh, video, inertial measurement units, um, force sensors, all kinds of different things that we can then measure different kinds of uh, behavior and motion of the real world system. To connect the real world to these uh, predictions of the real world with the models that come from our abstractions of the real world, we want to validate those models and connect these measurements to the predictions of the world. And that arrow is double-ended too. You can go both ways there. We can predict what is going to happen in the real world or we can take measurements of the real world to uh, drive and, uh, our, our models and show us um, um, yeah, functionally how things might work. But this is a good picture to keep in mind. We are going to spend most of our time in that top right hand gray box where we're going to be making um, abstractions of a real multi-body dynamic systems, modeling them, and, and then uh, doing some analysis and simulation. So we'll be on the right hand side for this class. Uh, but if you, for example, come and join our lab, uh, you would get to do this whole circle. Um, and you'll do that in some of your other classes that you, you take too that are more uh, practical oriented in terms of uh, experimental work. So what can you do with multibody dynamics? I want to give uh, a few examples here to maybe uh, inspire you. And mostly it's just a set of videos. Uh, I'm a biomechanicist, uh, as, I, as I mentioned. Um, we can study how people move. Um, the interconnected bodies that make up our musculoskeletal system can be modeled as a multi-body system. And, we, and these uh, simulations that I'm showing you uh, are driven fundamentally by the kind of um, simulations and modeling techniques that you will learn in this class. Um, spacecraft is another uh, uh, nice topic. The um, uh, different spacecraft that we launch into orbit. We land uh, uh, rovers on Mars, we send things circling uh, uh, Jupiter um, and uh, uh, out into the great distance of uh, the space. And we can pinpoint these uh, uh, locations and, and, uh, uh, and uh, paths of the spacecraft uh, very precisely. And we do that also by using um, multi-body dynamics models depending on how complex that spacecraft is. Uh, this first video I'll show you is about, show you is about a, uh, the Explorer 1 anomaly, which was a rocket that uh, ended up failing due to an instability. Um, turn the sound off and move it to 46. So this shows a multi-body simulation of uh, a model of portion of the Explorer 1 um, making a very violent uh, vibratory oscillation. It tries to understand why that might have happened and what caused it so we don't have other rockets that have these kind of uh, instability issues. Um, the other spacecraft there was a, a deployable solar um, origami style um, solar panel. Let me find the best part of the video. I forgot where this one shows the un oh there it is shows the unfolding <clears throat> so all of these interconnected pieces in this uh, solar array uh, are multi-body systems and we need to know how they are going to push on each other how they are going to interact and uh, and how we could actually deploy this and modeling them as a multi-body system can help us predict that before we send them up into space Robotics. A lot of you may be interested in robotics. We have uh, a very nice robotics program here. You've probably all seen uh, the famous Atlas robot from Boston Dynamics. It's really the most 
impressive robot in the world in terms of the gymnastics that it can do. And this is a, year, a, a little old video too. I think there's even cooler ones out uh, um, since I've uh, made this slide. Well, on the right, we have the Atlas Gazebo simulation. This is a simulation environment where you can uh, run the Atlas robot. Um, the Atlas uh, robot is modeled in this simulation software is a multi-body system. It's an under-actuated multi-body system that has uh, a number of actuators that you are sort of tasked with figuring out the control system that can make it do something useful. So these kind of simulators like Gazebo, after you take this class, you will have the fundamentals to be able to uh, program and understand um, a simulating system, a simulation system of that nature. Um, Biomimetic robots, right? So a lot of times we are uh, interested in how to make machines behave more like animals. And I don't know why I keep jumping from all these slides. I guess it doesn't like me where I press. Let's see. Here's a uh, MIT's cheetah, one of the early cheetah robots. Um, I'm doing some jumps, right? So this particular robot is designed uh, to be like an animal. This one on the right is a, a neat little leaping robot developed at UC Berkeley <clears throat> that uh, uh, mimics behavior of uh, different kinds of uh, jumping uh, lizards or amphibians, I believe, and things that uh, they get some of the inspiration from. Show a nice jump. So you can see how it uh, launches off the platform. So these little systems, uh, this little robot here is also uh, can be modeled as a multi-body system. And I'm sure folks at Berkeley likely did so to uh, understand and uh, work out some of the details of the robot before they actually build it. Um, I mentioned sports biomechanics too. I, I work a lot in sports. Uh, similarly, we can uh, think about uh, the motion of sports. So on the left, we do uh, we're doing an optimal pitch uh, simulation, and then on the right um, are is a motion capture setup. If I can, oh, here we go. That is. <clears throat> Um, actually doing an inverse dynamics and we'll learn what that is as we move forward uh, where we uh, take some measurements of motion and then uh, use um, the models that we develop for the multi-body system to predict what kinds of forces are happening at each joint in the body so that's uh, another example uh, I mentioned vehicle dynamics too right I love bicycles there's a lot of fun little bicycle robots that you can find uh, on YouTube. This is one of the uh, earlier successful ones. Um, this is also a, a, a multi-body system. And uh, modeling this uh, has been a key to understanding how we can make uh, uh, robots balance like this and, and understand how humans uh, balance. Here's a simulation for a multi-body system of a car. Uh, making maneuvers, right? So um, uh, cars or multiple uh, automobiles and all kinds of vehicles are also uh, multi-body systems that we can uh, examine and use the tools in this class to make predictions, predictions of the motion and understand how the forces and uh, such are affecting the system. Got a couple more bicycle things. This is uh, a more recent uh, Cornell's um, autonomous bicycle robot. Uh, we've also got some of these in the lab ourselves. So if you ever come by, you can uh, you can see some of our systems. But this is a pretty nice demonstration. Uh, they can radio control that one. And then this was a self-balancing uh, motorcycle startup that has since um, not succeeded, but it's a pretty interesting idea where they use control moment gyros to balance a um, enclosed uh, motorcycle. And this is all also a, uh, a nice multi-body system and you can uh, use the models uh, that we have in this class to understand how to make the control systems work successfully. 
And then lastly, my example here is it turns out that molecules at the molecule level um, also work and are governed by the same laws of motion that uh, everything else I already showed you. So uh, if my videos will play here. The, um, here's a, a, a molecular model of ice crystal melting. And um, uh, there's different forces at play at the molecular level that you have to take into account. But um, ultimately, these are the same kind of systems. You'll be able to use the same tools in this class to understand um, molecular dynamics. And then here's one of uh, protein folding and um, and such. So all of these things uh, are underpinned by multi-body dynamics and how um, understanding the motion of interconnected bodies in a three-dimensional space. Okay, so how will this course go? Um, we will use uh, Brightspace and this course website here. So uh, most of the information is going to be on the course website. I um, typically try to put as much as I can uh, open and online so that the uh, materials are open for other people to see and use. Um, you should read the syllabus carefully and if you have any questions uh, reach out to us on the discussion section of Brightspace. Um, I just want to point out that uh, on the schedule page, I clicked up here, um, I'll have a schedule and I will be putting all the materials, the videos, the course lecture notes, um, example uh, scripts and Python notebooks, uh, IPython, uh, Jupyter notebooks, etc. are all going to be uh, filling in this section. Okay, Your homeworks will be uh, visible on Brightspace as you go along under the assignments, uh, but check back to this uh, regularly for the materials that we post each week. Um, the basic flow of the course here, uh, each uh, Friday I'll post new lecture videos that you should watch before you come to the work session. We will also be posting homeworks so that you can come to the work sessions and work on the homeworks. Uh, the instructors will be present to answer your questions as you work on the homeworks during the work sessions. The class is essentially a bit flip, a flipped type of class and um, so you'll watch videos and then come and do the work uh, during class. There's only 75 people in the class as we all know all the rules so you need to sign up on Brightspace for that. You can also join via MS Teams to the work sessions in a hybrid link and we will be monitoring both and answering questions uh, in a hybrid fashion. And then lastly, there's a software page if you want to get in the software installed and get some learning uh, about some of the tools that we use, but we're also going to do those in the first homeworks and such too. All righty, so we've given you some intro. Uh, you know where to look for the information about the class and where those things are going to come. The last thing that I want to do here is give you a little bit of flavor of like where you're going to get in the class. We are going to use computational tools. Uh, in particular, um, we're going to be using tools uh, in the Python software programming language, Python programming language, to develop multi-body dynamics models of systems, simulate them, and visualize them. So, what does that look like? Well, it looks like it's going to look like this. So. I am going to open up Jupyter Notebook, which is the tool that we will be using uh, for learning and teaching in the class. Uh, I have a .ipynb file here called KL Spinulum. That is a Jupyter Notebook, and I'm going to open that notebook up. So here we're inside of Jupyter. Jupyter uh, Notebooks let you weave pictures, math, text, code, videos, uh, you name it. If it goes on the web, we can make it appear in a Jupyter Notebook. And the nice thing is, is that uh, most pieces are going to be interactive because you will be able to execute and play with the code that generates a lot of the content. Okay, so this notebook is uh, a fully uh, modeled multi-body dynamic system. It's a very simple system. You see the picture here. There is a uh, body that's a rod 
Okay, it's attached with a, at a revolute joint to sort of a ceiling area here. And this rod can swing back and forth in that revolute joint. So it's a simple com compound, uh, well, not a simple, but a compound pendulum. Right? But at the end of this compound pendulum, we have a flat plate, which is a second body. And it um, is attached to the rod and spins about the rod's axis relative to the plate. So I have a rod, if I can get in the video, right? It's, it uh, pendulums back and forth, and then I have a plate that rotates relative to the rod. So we swing it back and forth, and it can move like so. So this is the system that this Jupyter Notebook models, simulates, and, and does some analyses. Um, a Jupyter Notebook is made up of cells. You can execute each cell by selecting it and pressing this Run button. It shows it uh, executing, and then once it shows a number, it means that it's executed. Not all cells produce an output. You can also press Shift-Enter on the keyboard, and that will execute the cells. So as we move through this, um, I'm not going to go through the details. You guys can look at this, and it's really what you will be, be able to produce at the end of the course. But um, it'll give you some sense of what you're going to um, try to get to by the end of the course. Um, I'm not expecting you to understand everything in here, but the gist is just that uh, you're going to be able to tell a little story about this multi-body dynamic system in this Jupyter Notebook. Right? You're going to define the free body diagram, which I had at the top. You're going to declare variables. You're going to set up a different uh, uh, kinematic and uh, velocity and configuration relationships between rigid bodies um, and such. So I'll, I'll just walk through some of these and I'll shift enter my way down and you'll sort of see some things appear and some things not. But uh, we bring in some variables. Um, we're going to be using symbolic math tools here, so actually this outputs some symbolics. Um, I create some uh, reference frames or the different bodies in space, and I'm going to tell it how things are oriented to each other. Then I'm going to talk about different points that are point are important. Right? We wanna, we're often looking at the motion of specific points on the body, so I make points, and I. Uh, tell how their positions are related to each other. Um, after we get positions, we can think about velocities and accelerations of those points. So that's what this section is doing. Uh, these two output a couple of uh, vector equations that tell us what the velocities of certain points are. We're going to have to think about mass and inertia, right? Those are key pieces. The more heavy, the heavier something is, the harder it is to accelerate. Uh, and that goes for rotational acceleration too. So we create some uh, things that tell us the inertia of these objects and the mass of these objects. Finally, I create some rigid bodies. Uh, this section, I tell it what kinds of forces are acting on the system. In this case, we only have gravity. So we have very simple force definitions that act on the system. And then finally, with all those pieces, once you know the kinematics of the system, that's position, accelerate, uh, velocity, and acceleration, and you know the mass and inertia of that system, and you've defined these relationships uh, with the forces that are acting on that system, any external forces, we can form the so-called equations of motion. The equations of motion um, are made up of uh, Newton's uh, second law, F equals ma in 3D space and Euler's uh, equation of rotation motion, which is the time derivative of the angular momentum uh, equals all of the torques that are acting on the system. So uh, for multi-body systems, these equations of motion are non-trivial and they uh, can be quite complex, uh, but this section creates those. And um, for this system, it's not too bad. We actually can check out that these are in fact these end up being the equations of motion of the system and we get to see them in symbolic form. Once you get the equations of motion you can do lots of things with those. One of the things we'll do is simulation. So here I'm going to uh, put some numbers to some of these symbols so I give it an actual mass uh, values and, and realistic lengths and such and then I'll set up a simulation and I will integrate the 
um, in this case, ordinary differential equations that um, are the equations of motion. After you integrate these, you can look at how things change with respect to time. So these are the two angles. Uh, theta is that uh, main pendulum angle, and then um, phi is this angle about the, the axis of that pendulum. So I can simulate. I get from 10 seconds of simulation and I see some kind of periodic oscillation. The interesting thing about this system and most multibody systems is they can exhibit chaotic behavior. So the next little section shows uh, if I change the initial conditions in this simulation, like what angles they start at, I can actually get wildly different behavior. And you can see here that I've only changed um, the initial condition by, I think, a half a degree or so and uh, instead of a nice periodic motion suddenly I'm now seeing hundreds of degrees per second um, or hundreds of degrees of rotation so the uh, the system goes a bit chaotic and has uh, wildly crazy behavior for uh, the bottom rotating plate well, these are interesting. Uh, we can look at these plots. You can make sense of them. You, you will do that. But lastly, it's very important to visualize these things in 3D so that we can understand what's going. The last bit here finds some uh, shapes that, and uh, characterizes what these things should look like, what color they should be. And then for the last cell in this notebook, um, I can actually animate the system. So the blue axis is actually points down. It starts uh, up. I press play. I get a 3D motion of this chaotic behavior. And we can see it, how the blue uh, starts to behave more erratically. Not a simple oscillation as uh, a classic simple pendulum or compound pendulum would be. So this is an example of where you will get it. By the end of this course, you're going to be creating Jupyter Notebooks just like this that start with a free body diagram of some uh, interesting um, and complex multi-body system connected bodies. Um, and then you're going to develop the correct equations of motion that will effectively simulate and predict the motion of that object in 3D space uh, so that you can use it for um, a multitude of other things, whether you're going to control a robot or analyze how things move, prevent a spacecraft from crashing, um, figure out how a baseball uh, thrower can pitch the fastest pitch uh, in the world. Okay, So um, that is what I've got for you for this first video. It's a brief introduction. Um, the slides will be put on the website. The video will be put on the website. You can check out some of these videos and such that I've shared, you, shared with you. Uh, the Jupyter Notebook will be there also. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to meeting you all uh, this coming Tuesday in the work session. And uh, I hope this uh, is exciting to you and that this looks um, useful. Um, and they, we can have a good time trying to make it through uh, and get you all to a point where you can simulate and model multi-body dynamic systems. Bye-bye.